There's his teammate, Stefan Beloff, in the only Tyrrell that did get into the race. Uh, and he is 20th. He's the only non-turbocharged car in the race, in fact. It's coming out of the Mirabeau. That, I think, was Francois Eno in the Ligier, but the rest of the field fun coming. Still, Stefan Beloff following his fellow German, the ATS of Winkelhock. Ooh, a little twitch there from the back end of Beloff's uh, Tyrrell, which he corrected. There's Beloff. And René Arnoux's pit signals, if he can read them in the Merck, will tell him that it's the black nose of Tyrrell number four that he's got to watch for in his mirrors. There is Lauda, there is Arnoux, there is Beloff in third, fourth and fifth positions, very, very close indeed. So the drama and the excitement redoubled here. And despite the conditions, the, the uh, hardy spectators, if they're still able to focus through the rain, are having a wonderful race to watch. Here's the Lowe's hairpin once more. There is the uh, Williams of Lafitte, about to be lapped by Lauda, Arnu, and Beloff. They're all now in one picture together, and Beloff is closing all the time. On with the opposite lock a little bit, into the dry of the tunnel, and De Angelis has set the fastest lap. 64 miles an hour average. De Angelis, you remember, was completely held up, actually had to engage reverse gear on the first lap with that uh, sound of vote accident when his way was blocked by the Renaults, and he is now up into seventh position and closing on the championship points holders. Now, the Williams of... Lafitte has Lauda very close. Is Lafitte going to keep out of the way? Lauda looking for a way by. He finds it at Rascass. Nicky Lauda is through. Arnu isn't. And Beloff is right up with René Arnu now. René Arnu had to yield to the charging Tolman of uh, Ayrton Senna earlier. And now he's got another of these young whippersnappers close up to his exhaust pipes. It's Stefan Beloff. And Arnu is looking for a way past the Williams himself and Beloff tries to go between the two of them. There's no stopping this German, but he has to hold back for a moment. Arnu is past the Williams. Beloff laps Lafitte as well as they go up the hill and still Beloff has his sights on the Ferrari. Tolman, and there is the third man, Stefan Beloff. So Beloff driving as hard as he knows it's and Nicky Lauda's race is run and there's still a McLaren out in front but here is the charging Stefan Beloff and now it's third place that they're fighting over René Arnoux has inherited third place from Nicky Lauda Stefan Beloff could not be closer in fourth place out from the swimming pool down towards Rascas on the brakes down into second gear then first gear for the tight hairpin Beloff sitting in the spray of the Ferrari up to the Gaswick Works hairpin over the very bumpy section there, across the camper, hard on the power to start their 25th lap, the Ferrari, with a lot more power than the Tyrrell, pulls away briefly, but now they slow for sound of vote, and the Tyrrell is right up with René Arnoux again. Now, where's he going to find a place to go by? Up the hill, he has a little look, but this is where it's so slippery. There's a blue flag, but uh, René Arnoux doesn't want to know about that. Over the bumps, into the casino square, this is where Nicky Lauda has just come to grief a lap since. And a twitch there from the Arnu Ferrari. Beloff tucked in beside, down the hill past the tip top. Beloff isn't close enough now to have a look at the inside for Mirabeau. He stays behind, out of Mirabeau, but he's very close now down to the Lowe's hairpin. Bottom gear, just walking pace almost briefly. The little twitch from the back end of the Tyrrell once again as Beloff tramps his right foot on the throttle. Out of Portier. The brief pause in the spray as they go into the tunnel, where there's definitely a dry line now, close to that apex, back onto the streaming wet road at 160 miles an hour. Slowing for the chicane. Out of the chicane. This is where the spray is at its worst, because on the waterfront, by to back, it's still very, very wet indeed. In fact, it's raining harder than ever. Past the swimming pool, over those difficult white lines, 
we've heard word from Nigel Mansell who's walked back to the pits that he says that it was on the white lines painted on the road that he lost control of his car in fact uh, we gather one of the Bugattis spilt some oil there in the historic race that we had this morning that might have been a factor not even Nigel Mansell will ever really know what caused that accident. There's Ricardo Patrese out of his car at last. Patrese, who'd been running at the back of the field, he was 10th, so that means we've only got nine cars still running now. Still Alain Prost, the leader. Still Ayrton Senna in second place. Still this wonderful battle for third place. And going up the hill, the Tyrrell makes a real charge. But has it got the power? No, Arnoux just won't let uh, Stefan Beloff get close enough for that. So once again, the Tyrrell has to hang back, but now he tries on the inside at Massonet. Stefan Beloff driving the race of his life, and he's absolutely unawed by the fact that he's battling with one of the hardest drivers in the world. As they go down the hill, he's trying on the inside. He is trying on the inside. Arnoux tries to shut the door, but Beloff is through. Stefan Beloff has gone through, despite the efforts of René Arnoux to shut the door, as they came down the hill past the tip-top bar and into Mirabeau. And as they go away from those, down to Portier, and onto the 